Hi, Harry Dent on January 11th, 2012 with an update. Uh, as all of you know, we've been looking uh, for a long time for this rally to come to an end. It's an artificial rally uh, from the Fed and the government stimulus. Uh, baby boomers, we, as you know, uh, have peaked in their spending back around late 2007. Uh, we had $42 trillion in debt started to deleverage there, but of course the government threw trillions of dollars, loan guarantees, QE1, QE2, TARP and everything to stop the financial system from melting down. But all it has done is pushed money into the banking system that has not been lent. It's been reinvested, often at high leverage, creating a third bubble. Commodities, stocks, bonds, junk bonds, gold, silver, oil all going up at the same time. It's called the risk on trade. We think this risk on trade is getting ready to end, either here in January or at the latest mid-March. And, and we, we've been telling in our newsletter recently for people to be a little ahead of the game, be getting out of stocks here. This is the time finally to get out. Now, there's a number of reasons. First, good way to picture the baby boom, just a little more insight. Again, the peak in spending comes at age 46. The baby boomers hit that in peak numbers in late 2007. But there's a plateau into age 50 as the kids are getting out of the nest from high school to college in different families. So spending goes more sideways. The important point, spending drops like a rock from age 50 into death. In 2012, baby boomers are going to hit that 50 drop off. So we think if the stimulus has been hard to work thus far, and it has, remember, QE1 strong for about a year, then the economy flopped. That's why they had to come up with QE2. Well, the same thing. QE2 is going to wear off from its peak in June of 2011 on about an 8 to 10 month lag, probably in the second quarter of this year. So baby boomers are set to move into a deeper slowing. QE2 is set to wear off. Because the economy's been better than expected, and our leading indicators in our newsletter did tell us that, that the third and fourth quarter we were going to be rising in spending and it was going to be better than expected, that has kept the Fed from further stimulus. That's the important point. Without stimulus, due to baby boom slowing and deleveraging, this economy's dead, and it's been proven time and time again. The Fed has not been able to continue to stimulate aggressively since June 2011, on a lag, that leaves a gap in the U.S. economy from about the second quarter through the end of the year. We're saying, number one, with Europe moving into recession, and what's happening there is very simple. They don't have a printing press. In most of those countries, the bond markets have long ago said, you guys, economies are too slow, your deficits are too high, go on austerity, or we're going to raise your interest rates. And, of course, they did. The Germans are the only ones that can really stand behind a bailout are saying we're not going to bail you out unless you cut your expenditures, raise your taxes. Austerity is the right policy from our point of view. Better to have short-term pain than long-term insolvency, but it also in the short term will clearly continue to push Europe in a deeper recession. So we see Europe slowing down further, that backing off in the U.S., especially with QE2 wearing off. And then the slowing of Europe and the United States hitting China's exports and other countries. And then all the countries that export materials and energy to China get hit. Next thing you know, we could be in a worldwide slowdown. Now, there's another couple of factors we're looking at. There's 4 million foreclosures in the pipeline, two already in process, another 2 million seriously delinquent coming into the process in the near term. 4 million foreclosures. Banks have been holding back these foreclosures in the last few years. Number one, because they don't want to kill an already weak market. Number two, they've been hoping that the Fed would turn around the economy, home prices would come back, and they could sell these foreclosures later at higher prices and not have to write off all their bad loans. This is clearly not happening. One of the clear warning signals here we've been pointing to for a long time, with the lowest mortgage rates in modern history, and with the strongest stimulus program ever in the U.S. and around the world, home prices are still edging down. They're now slightly lower than they were at the bottom of the economy in mid-2009. If, if, if 200,000 in jobs in December and all this stimulus and low mortgage rates cannot get home prices to come up, what will? And if we go into a slowdown or banks are, are forced because of their need for cash flow to dump more foreclosures on the market, which I think they're going to have to do and already starting to do, 
home prices go down, the banks are in trouble, the economy's in trouble. So again, we see this as a critical time. We, we think the economy's going to slow. A few months from now, start to slow. By the time the Fed finally reacts with a QE3, say sometime in the second quarter, by the time it hits, it's going to be too late from our view with, with Europe melting down. Now, another thing we're looking at, we have a lot of technical indicators in our, in our newsletter. We're, we're looking for what the smart money's doing, what the dumb money's doing, when investors kind of overbuy a, an investment or sector, or when they oversell it and panic on the downside. One of the best long-term indicators comes from a service called Lowry's that studies selling pressure and buying power. And what you look for at the end of a long rally like this, this rally that started in March 2009 and looks like it's maturing now to us, you expect in the final rally, which we've seen since October 2nd into January, you expect selling pressure uh, to rise instead of to fall. Normally in, in a bull market, selling pressures fall. And you expect buying power to fall instead of to rise. That is what's happening. This is signaling that this looks like the final rally. The real question for us, very simple, and it's very hard to call this, where do we top here? We're thinking it's possible. Our, our lowest target was 1294 on the S&P 500. We hit that on January 10th. So that, again, that's a sell signal for us. Now, on the other hand, we've got a higher target, a slight new high over the May 2nd high, around 1371 to 1378 on the S&P 500. If we get there, that's going to be a very clear sell signal. But we're telling people, get out a little ahead. Too much downside, too much bad news could come suddenly. Uh, the smart money always gets out a little ahead. That's what we measure in our newsletter. So again, People should get out of stocks here, be safe. Uh, more moderate investors can be in, in everything from cash, T-bills, treasury bonds, and the UUP, which is an ETF that tracks the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has been going up. We've been getting people in our newsletter in the U.S. dollar in the last several months. It was the only thing that went up along with treasury bonds in the last crash. And we're going to be looking in our newsletter very near term and over the coming weeks and months for opportunities for more aggressive investors to actually bet on the markets going down to short stocks, to short gold. Again, the risk off trade, everything's been going up together except the U.S. dollar. Everything will go down together. Commodities, gold, silver, oil, stocks here and around the world and real estate. So again, stay tuned. This is an important time. Look at your portfolio. This is the time to take action. Thanks.